There are times when golf can feel like a nine to five job. You're just standing there looking at the clock, waiting for it to be over. And coincidentally, the average golf score is 95. But wouldn't it be nice if instead of working from nine to five on your golf game, you started working from seven to two. 72, that's a much better number. What you're gonna learn today is the exact lesson I would give someone to go from 95 to 72 and play the best golf of their life. Now that was a refreshing golf shot. The first thing you should do with any golf swing is work on improving your contact point. And that starts at the setup. When I get set up to the golf ball, you might notice a few different things that help me to crisp it every single time. And it feels great. The first thing is I'm standing over the ball. I'm not leaning away and I'm not leaning towards the target. Staying over the ball is one of the foundations of striking the ball solid. If I stayed over it, you see my shoulders, hips, and knees, it's all like boxes on top of each other. If I just stayed like this throughout the swing, the chance of me striking it pure goes up immensely. There it is again. And so your first thing is get over the ball. Just get over it. Don't get away from it. Don't lean away too far. The second thing you notice in my setup is this lead arm. Look at how it's nice and straight. It's not bent. The arms aren't pulled apart like this. Rather, they're nice and together. So I'm over the ball with my lead arm staying straight. The lead arm staying straight is going to allow me to have the club hit the ground in the same spot every time. And this is one of the biggest concepts that golfers need to learn is how to control this contact point, how to know what moves the contact point. So if I keep the lead arm straight, and I stay over the ball. I'm talking about lead arm straight all the way to the top of back swing right here. And as I start down, it's still staying straight. As I get into impact, it's still straight. After impact, it's straight. Keeping that intact throughout the swing is going to improve your contact point a ton. So I'm just gonna keep that arm straight throughout the swing and stay over the ball. So recipe number two. And there's ball first and divot again. Great control over the contact point. The next thing you're looking at for my setup is my right arm. My right arm is not out because if it gets out, then I start flipping at the ball and having some bad contact. So we tuck that arm in with the lead arm staying straight. This is going to control a ton of my swing, which I'll get to in a little bit. You're seeing from the setup here, I'm building my entire swing. So my weight I'm over the ball, I got my left arm straight, my right arm tucked in, and from here I just swing. Once again, a crisp strike. And then the last thing we'll look at with my setup is my hand position. Look at the hands, they're forward. You know what good impact looks like? Looks like that. So the hands are forward, I'm presetting impact. So I'm telling the club to hit the ball first and make a nice crispy divot after it. And all these things I just told you about in the setup relate to solid contact over the ball. Left arm straight, right arm tucked in, hands forward. What do I think? I just think about swinging once I do this. So I've done a pre-flight checklist of a few items. Once I get over the ball, my pre-flight checklist is done. All those setup, all those setup points right there, I just work on doing the swing. The next thing that I would do to get your handicap dropping like crazy is learn how to use the body in the swing. So how do we swing the club? We have to learn how to use the shoulders. Instead of just trying to control the hands and the arms, figure out where I want the arms to go, that's many different swings at one point in time. How could I get the same result? I can't get the same result there if I'm trying to control a million different pieces, like conductor. To get your swing to work with less variables, we just simply do a few things. One is connect your upper arms against your sides. So now I've got this machine. <laughs> It's like hydraulic powered. My shoulders are now controlling the machine. And then I get in my setup and I just use those same shoulders. I was about to say shame shoulders. <laughs> use the shoulders like that. So now instead of my swing being up and over in all these places, I have the same path every time. Back, through, back, through. And what's that look like with the club? It looks like this. Back swing on the proper path, down swing on the proper path. And am I thinking any psychotic things or like extra manipulating moves or in-depth angles and 
whether the gravitational pull of the earth and the moon and the sun is going to affect my swing. No, none of that's crossing my mind. That's a lot of stuff to think about. The only thing that crosses my mind then after a good setup is using the shoulders like that. So how do you think about the shoulders? Well, front shoulder under your chin, and front shoulder under the chin. Boom. What are we doing with the downswing? Then my right shoulder, trail shoulder under the chin. So when I get my shoulders working, your entire body is going to work and the club's going to trace the same path. This is where the power comes in. I've got the power. So I get over the ball with my lovely setup and I just shoulder it. I'm shouldering it all. And you look at my backswing, you see the left shoulder gets under the chin and then the downswing, the right shoulder gets under the chin. And it's like a mirror image. It's backswing, downswing, and it's free moving. You know, if at any point you have those shoulders stop moving, you're going to see contact issues. That's the number one cause of golf swing drudgery in this world is this shoulder stops. Ooh, club goes straight down on the ground. You hear that thud. But the number one cause of golf swing happiness is when the shoulders can move around, jump around. If your shoulders can move back and through, they're allowed to move back and through freely, you're going to strike it solid and your body's going to naturally move. So another thing you should see with your swing once you get the shoulders going is how the body moves. Look, look at this. Hips are turning, shoulders turn the hips, shoulders turn the hips in the backswing, shoulders turn the hips in the downswing. I just let the body follow and it does. It won't follow if you try and hit the ball with the hands and arms or if you drop the shoulder. <laughs> Maybe you swing over it and drop the shoulder. It's just not very natural. That's why, go back to this, if you ever have any issues, I've got this machine right here, swinging back and through, back and through, while the shoulders keep moving. So that would be how to have a powerful golf swing. Now you're wondering, you might be wondering, Tom, that sounds way too simple. There's so much more going on than that. And you could think about it that way, but check this out. This is really gonna simplify a lot of things. So that setup I told you about, look at the hands forward. I got, I'm over the ball. A lot of your swing is taken care of right here. I've got a good relationship. My spine's tilted towards the ground. If I just swung the shoulders, that's the path right there. That's the backswing. I don't change anything. So problems come in when you start trying to change this setup. So you, like I said, I got the right arm tucked in. I got the left arm straight. If I just kept it like that, the backswing would look like this. But if my right arm gets away from me, oh, I've got problems. Or if the left arm breaks down, I got problems. So problems come in when you lose what you have at setup. And that's why it's so simple. You are setting up your swing. 95% of it's gonna happen here. My swing is built here. That's why my swing will look different if I change my setup. So for example, watch if I, if I change my spine, if I lean it away from the target. Well, now I'm gonna top this ball. My swing just changed. Or if I lean too much towards the target, I'm hitting way down into it. And I'm swinging up a lot and, and chopping. That's just, that's just one aspect of my setup right there. So that's why I'm gonna get over it and stay over it. And then I work on turning the shoulders around the body. So you'll find that your swing is built in the setup. And then once we've got the swing built there, the last thing we do is this really simple drill and it's awesome. All I want you to do is focus on a couple things. One is keeping your weight forward. Two is swinging the shoulders. If you've seen a few of my episodes, I talk about, I took a guy who had never played golf before. And that's an episode I did back in August of 23. He never played golf before. He was one of the cameramen. He comes out, I set him up this way, he swings, he hits the, his first shot ever crisp. And that's just because of the setup and then turning the shoulders. So I've got this setup here, I've added a little bit more weight for it. I'm just gonna swing my shoulders. And when I finish, I'm stopping short here 
I'm stopping short so that you can see that if you had good impact or not. Because if you don't know how you're doing, then how do you know if you're on the right track? Well, we have to know. And what we know is our finish can tell us that. Our finish can tell us everything about our game. So when I finish my swing, you're gonna see those arms are straight. My, both arms are straight. You wanna see that right there. And my weight never shifted back. And it's a beautiful shot. How much thinking is this? It's minimal thinking, because once I've got the setup taken care of, this is the only thing I do. Okay, arm in, left arm straight. Over the ball, weight forward. Now from here, keep the weight more forward for the drill and just swing the shoulders. Do it with every club in the bag. I don't care if it's the driver, if it's a long iron. Here's my four iron. It's one of my favorite clubs in the bag from this drill. You can learn good impact with every club in the bag. Whoop. Just keep the same setup, and then I'm going to swing the shoulders. And it's nuked. Nothing beats the feeling of a good long iron, by the way. All the way up through the driver. This is actually, I think hitting a long iron off the turf like this is a good challenge. Hitting a driver, it's teed up. Being able to rip a long iron off the turf with a drill like this would tell you right away how you're doing. Can you keep the arm straight through impact? So then look at, we've built the setup. We've built the backswing. Well. You notice I haven't said anything about downswing. Why is that? Because this will be our first lesson together, and I don't want you thinking too much. But if you wanted to know a little bit more about the downswing, I would just work on keeping the shoulders moving and keep your right arm in, because it's gonna take care of it for you. See, the right arm is magic. I hate using gimmicky words like magic, but it... when I take it back, I got the right arm in. When I start down, the right arm's in. It, it's a beautiful downswing. It just starts on its own. If it, All problems will happen when that arm comes out. So don't let the arm come out. And I, I'm just keeping this, though. When I start it set up, I keep this. Arm in, left arm straight, weight forward. I, I'm keeping it so downswing's already preset. And that's why we didn't cover it. We don't need to. It's already built in. doesn't mean that there might not be a lesson on downswing in the future, because sometimes you need to tweak that. But on the average, if you kept that arm tucked in, you're gonna see a good downswing. It doesn't matter what club in the bag either. And just swathing at this long iron. Well, isn't that refreshing? That it doesn't feel like a nine to five job. I'm going out here and I'm just drudging around. I don't wanna be out here. No, it feels like a seven to two job. Working a lot less, getting a lot more. If you just made your practice session five or 10 minutes of this, you're gonna see a huge return on that investment instead of just beating balls all day. You're pre-programming fun golf. Boop, 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 boop. And if you're looking to take your golf game to the next level, I've got an online golf school, Segudo.golf. It's a structured golf swing training program that shows you how to build your swing step by step. Golf does not have to be nine to five jobs.